60,000 subscribers uh, and over 10 million views across my 73 videos. Um, I talk about life as a software engineer living in Silicon Valley, making videos about career advice, coding and technology, um, talking about my experiences around imposter syndrome, cultural identity, emotional vulnerability, among a lot of other things on YouTube. So don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> So I've written a letter to my former self. Um, I've been going to therapy for a couple of years now, and I found so much value in talking to your inner child, your younger self, as a way to heal, grow, and learn. Um, it's going to contain a lot of advice that I wish I had heard when I was a college student, um, and a lot of the stuff you may or may not identify with, and that's okay. Um, but I hope that some of you relate to a part of this is all I ask for. Um, after this, we're going to do a little interactive session with each other we'll, where you'll get to know each other a little better with some honest questions to answer, and I promise it's not going to be scary, it's going to be fun. Alright, so, without further ado, my letter to my former self. Dear me, it's me from the future, it's 2020. You're 27 now, uh, you're working at a large tech company in Silicon Valley, uh, and you've been a software engineer for six years. So actually in 2020, the future looks a little bleak. Climate change, politics, all that stuff. Uh, and so we're not super hopeful about the future, but I will say that people are way more informed than ever thanks to technology, and so I think that's kind of the silver lining here. It's kind of hard to adult uh, after college, making friends, remembering deadlines for life things, making sure you're taking care of your full physical self in a world that's only telling you to work harder. It's a little tough. Um, oh, also, remember how you spent four years writing Java in college? No one writes it anymore, really, so <laughs> great. Also, Twitter bootstrap is long forgotten, so yeah, things change really fast. It's, it's exactly what they say about technology. Um, oh, and cars finally drive themselves. We're in the future. But it kind of looked like that and not back to the future, so, you know, but I'll take it. So you, you are a junior in college, so 2013-ish. Um, you're taking classes like compilers, which uh, sucks, I hated that class. Uh, operating systems, machine learning. Um, you're having a ton of fun with lots of different student organizations. You're still afraid to go to office hours because you're afraid that professors and TAs are going to shut you down because that's really happened before. Um, and you're hopeful that every quarter is going to be the quarter where you're turning around. Spoilers, it's not going to be, I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, but the future feels both hopeful and unknown at the same time. 
The other thing that I remember about you, younger me, is that you have so much self-doubt. Um, you didn't start coding until college, unlike a lot of the other students in the class. And so you're feeling behind, you feel like you're not up for this, maybe you're not meant for this. Um, also, you went to a large university. Uh, and so it feels like you're swimming in a group of 500 students going towards the same direction, and you don't actually know where you're going. So the questions that are ringing in your head right now are questions like, how are you going to succeed? How will you find your own footing? How will you find your own direction? And how do you stand out to employers? So, younger me, I think I've finally figured out some things about the industry and about ourselves that I want to talk about today so that we can find our way through the tech industry. And I want to share with you those things now. I call this Five Steps to Finding Your Own Way, and I promise this isn't clickbait. <laughs> <laughs> so step one, we're going to start off with a softball here. This is figure out who you are. It's a tough question to answer because you're basically asking yourself, what makes you unique? What makes you you? When we inhabit our own body and we only experience reality within ourselves, it almost feels like an impossible question to answer. But we're going to figure this out together and it will be okay. And I think the thing to focus on here is to figure out what your values are. This requires some mean introspection about the environment that you grew up in, the vivid memories that you remember as a child growing up, and what influenced you to be who you are up until this point. For some, it might be really easy to define. For others, well, we have to figure it out as we go. So ask yourself, what matters to you? What do you want from in life? And what makes you genuinely happy? And you might find out more about who you are. Another really great thing to ask yourself is why did you start coding, coding, especially as you're defining your career as a software engineer? Some people get into coding because they love tinkering with stuff and that's what they've done their whole life. Others like coding because they love seeing things come to life. The reason why you, younger me, got into coding is because you love helping people. You want to help people with the code that you write and help them do things that they couldn't do before. So let this guide you. When we're facing a tough decision between employers or maybe choosing which project to work on to put on our portfolio for employers, let this guide you. And in doing so, you might notice some new doors and opportunities that you hadn't seen before. And also remember that as you're answering these questions, that your values are always going to change. Heck, you don't even have to have the answers for these questions right now. These are big questions. So there's a lot of things in this world to experience and not much time to do it. So just allow yourself to get out of your comfort zone and discover who you truly are. So that's number one, figure out who you are. Number two is find the OMG yes moment. So y'all use Spotify, yeah? You know when in like your Discover Weekly you find the song that you're just like, oh my gosh, this is like the best song ever? It's kind of that feeling. It's that like, oh my gosh, like I feel like, like electrifying feeling in my body right now. This is so great, I love this so much. So I wanted to talk about this because now that you've figured out your own origin story, your values, why you got into coding, let these moments, the OMGS moments, inform you on what you're passionate about and what excites you. Collecting these experiences in your memory will help you stay tuned for opportunities that may come your way, that play to those experiences. There will be many little threads that will start to unravel into something bigger and something clearer that you'll be able to define as your dream. And once you... Hello. <laughs> Once you start keeping an eye out for OMG yes moments, you'll find that they are everywhere. So for instance, your OMG yes moments will come at a time when the project you've been working on for days and days and days finally compiles. Hello? Okay. Uh, yeah, so when it finally compiles or 
When you find a cool new technology that you feel like you've been looking for your whole life, you've been doing it the hard way, that's an OMG yes moment. By noticing these, you know, for me, you're going to remember that you find inherent joy in building things and creating things with your hands. Or remember, you know, for me, how when you were in high school, you loved watching Asian American YouTubers like Waffle Productions and Kina Granis. You were so obsessed, and then when you realized that they were all friends with each other, also, and then the DS <laughs> Believe it or not, Amy, and this is kind of spoilers, this OG moment, or OG yes moment, is what influence you, influences you to start working at Patreon, a company that helps creators like Waffle Productions and Kina Granis earn a living for what they do. So combining your values with these OMG moments, can start giving some tangibility to your experience. It'll kind of feel like things just <coughs> because standing on the foundation of your values and who you are as a person with experiences that get you excited for life. So next, take it one step at a time. So now that we figured out an idea of the direction and world that we want then, I want to give you, younger me, some advice that hopefully will ground us to stay the course and not get overwhelmed and get us into execution mode. So when we're dreaming big, it's easy for those big dreams to feel daunting like a bubbling volcano, because in the end, it takes courage to go after what you really want. So instead of pushing off our dreams or putting it in a pedestal or a nice box and putting a banner on it that says future plans and never touching it again, we must find the bravery and courage within ourselves to go and find it. It's easier said than done for sure, but unlike Hollywood movies where the protagonist issues the fatal blow to the villain, or YouTube videos where months of work get distilled down into a 13 minute video, future plans are achieved with a countless amount of little achievements and take time to accomplish. Had to throw in Mr. Miyagi in there. <laughs> also, in an industry where things feel like things are changing overnight, it is easy to get caught up in the pace of technology where things seem to happen immediately and without effort. But you ever may know that that's not true. I know that each new technology takes years to create and thousands of hours for lots of different people to make into a reality. Also think about when we work on large-scale software projects that a lot of companies, we figure out what are, should I use this one? Hello? Hello, hello, hello? Okay, I'll stay stationary. Oh, no, okay. So when we work on large-scale soft, software projects, we are always uh, planning we're always writing down all the tasks for the project at the beginning to manage the complexity, identify dependencies, and figure out our plan. That helps everyone stay focused, motivated, and convert something that's ambiguous and seemingly intangible into something tangible and manageable. And planning sometimes enables us to stay nimble and flexible in case directions change as well. So think about planning and execution of your own dreams like that too. But unlike software projects, there isn't really like an end, I guess death, but it, there isn't really somewhere that you're trying to get to because it's something that you're always going to work on your whole life. So this is an invaluable skill. So patient progress builds younger me was actually my 2019 mantra. So just be patient and take it one step at a time and one day you'll have built something great. So now, let's take a bit of time to talk about imposter syndrome. Can you raise your hand if you've experienced imposter syndrome before? So many people, look around you, like there's so many people who experience that, right? Okay. So, in case you don't know what imposter syndrome is, it's when you feel like you're a fraud or a failure or an imposter, despite the fact that you are not. Uh, and I'm happy to report that we're talking about it way more in 2020 than we were in 2013. And younger me, I remember you had so much of this in college. Like I said, you hadn't written an ounce of code before college, and uh, every class felt like you were the only one where you were struggling. 
Polygamy, well, it's not, in, uh, it's not possible to get rid of imposter syndrome entirely. I will say that 2020 What You Go has gotten way better at managing it. So I wanted to share my fourth piece of advice for finding your way through the tech industry that has helped shift my perspective a lot away from imposter syndrome. And that's just to stop comparing yourself to others. So if you think about all of the ways, the factors and combinations that exist in the world that make someone who they are or that make a certain piece of code written the way that it is, there are an infinite, if not millions and billions of ways. When you start thinking about this from a probability and statistics standpoint, it almost starts feeling super ultra rare that you are who you are and that you're here right now. Everyone has a very different, different path and journey towards where they want to go, and it's almost beautiful that that's the case. We're all experiencing a similar reality, and yet we're all living such different lives thanks to the slight differences in our experiences. So when we think about the, the fact that there are an infinite number of possibilities, how is it even fair that we're comparing ourselves to each other? I know it's easy, because it's programmed to, to a brace to be self-critical and to judge ourselves for our shortcomings. And while this can be a helpful skill to reassess ourselves to get to where we need to go, when it gets to a certain point of imposter syndrome, you know, for me, it becomes destructive. Comparing ourselves to someone else who's different from us gets in the way and makes us forget what we really want in life and where we really want to go. And I know it feels like this industry is comparing us to one another all the time, especially when classes are graded on a curve, or when there's only a certain amount of spots in a company that you can get an offer for. Um, and we also walk in the footsteps of those who come before us. And while a lot of them are great role models, they're also not the full picture of who's a part of this community or what's possible either. So I know it's easy to turn against our neighbors when we're constantly comparing ourselves to one another and to those who come before us. And call me naive, but younger me, wouldn't it be great if instead of comparing and judging ourselves to other people, we could celebrate each other's wins and learn from each other? That's the kind of industry that I want to see where there are a million different stories of people that we celebrate. Comparison is the thief of joy, said Theodore Roosevelt, and I wholeheartedly agree. It's so much better, so much easier, so much happier if we can embrace our full selves and celebrate and learn from others instead and just get rid of the comparison and judgment at the door. All right, last tip in the lead. I hope so far that these have been helpful. Now this last one is something that I currently am working on. And I think this is by far the hardest thing because it requires a huge leap of faith. And that's to trust yourself. Finding your way through this industry and making changes for the life that you want takes courage and risk. And there will be times where you feel strong feelings of imposter syndrome and doubt creep up. There will also be times when your values and your person feels like they're at odds with others. And that will be tough. You'll need to make compromises, take risks, make leaps of faith that you're not super comfortable with. But we're the most responsible person, and we're the most capable of achieving our own happiness. So trust that you're going to be okay, and that there's nothing wrong with doing you. So, dearest human me, I hope this one-on-one -on -one time helped. And I think that these five tips combined Figure out who you are, find own GS moments, take it one step at a time, stop comparing yourself to others, and trust yourself. We'll hopefully shed some light and give you some ideas on how to move forward. It's now up to you to walk forward in this path, so let these lessons guide you to feel more confident, and so that you don't feel so alone, because I am right here with you. Sincerely, me. So, thank you all for coming along on that journey with me to my yourself.
Um, I hope that some of these things resonate with y'all. These are absolutely the things that I needed to hear as a college student. Uh, and granted, a lot of this is catered towards me and who I am, so take that as you know. So before I get to my list of magical questions that I will share with you, to ask yourself for finding your own way, for finding your own way in the tech industry, I wanted to try something out real quick. Um, I think there's so much power in sharing stories and getting to know people more personally in this environment, as we are all stepping into the tech industry, so I wanted to try something. You down for that? Yeah. <laughs> so, we're going to share stories with each other in this room. Um, this is definitely going to be an exercise in vulnerability, but my hope is that you form connections and widen your worldview as part of this talk. So, um, kind of some ground rules. An important part of making this whole thing work is to be a good listener, be respectful, and be present for the other person. Um, some of us are going to be sharing some really personal stuff that maybe we've never told anybody before, so keep that in mind. And we all take a part um, in creating an inclusive and positive environment for everybody. So, uh, okay. So, the things you're going to share, your name, obviously, don't be rude, um, where you're from, like where you grew up, what school you go to, what you study, and then just to start it off a little bit, just get the conversation flowing, talk about what did you want to be when you grew up. Think about when you were in kindergarten and your kindergarten teacher asked you this, what did you say? And then, I'm going to give you an option because these questions kind of might be hard, uh, and I know this might be kind of silly and it might go into the deepest parts of your psyche, but go along with it. So what would you say to your younger self? If you had to write a letter today, what's a piece of advice that you would give to maybe your freshman self in college or your high school self or your middle school self? Um, what are your hopes and dreams for the future right now? Or what's important to you in life? Um, you can talk about one or many of these. And I would like for us to get into groups of three here. Um, if possible, meet with someone who you haven't talked to before or met. Um, University of Ottawa in Carleton, you have to set aside your differences in <laughs> uh, You can stay in groups where you know the other person if you haven't talked about these things before. Um, so I'm going to give ourselves about like 20 minutes to do this. I'll set a timer so you can control for yourself, take some time to do it. being a part of that. I really appreciate your participation and your engagement in all of that because you didn't have to, but you did, so thank you. All right, so uh, I wanted to share my list of magical questions. Um, the answer, so I ask myself these questions every time I'm embarking on something brand new. They're really similar to the questions that you ask each other, but there's a, there's a bit more and they're in my talk as well. Um, and so these are some of those questions. So when you're starting something new, again, base yourself in your origin story. The why did you do this uh, from the beginning and what got you started? So why did you get into coding or tech or whatever it is that you're venturing into? What matters to you? Always a, a really difficult question to ask yourself, but I think an important one to ask all the time. What do you want from in life? Uh, this can be like, hey, I want financial security, or uh, I want my weekends free, or hey, I want to travel a lot, or I want to spend lots of time with my parents. Whatever answer that is for you, um, that, that's yours, and you should own it. What do you love doing? What do you really enjoy? So finding those OMG yes moments. I still love going to karaoke, and that's something that I love doing, so that's always an answer for me. And what are you good at in life? This one probably changes the most as you learn and you gain new skills. Um, but I think this is one of the things that'll help you understand what differentiates yourself from other people. For me, I'm like so good at empathizing with people, so much so that it can be bad sometimes because I swallow people's emotions. But that's ultimately what helped me to become a product software engineer, so I see that as a strength now. Um, what are some OMG yes moments you've felt in the last six months? So similar to what do you love doing, what do you really enjoy? And then this one's really tough to ask yourself, but what are your fears? Um, I realized that I'm, I've made a lot of fear-based decisions in my life, and so just naming what those fears are, being cognizant of it, uh, I think is important. It doesn't mean that you don't have to be afraid of them. I'm so afraid of so many things. Oh, shush you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but I think confronting them and looking at them when you're in a good place to do so will also reveal a lot of things about yourself. 
So, uh, I hope that this session and the interactive session and these questions are helpful for you all. And I really thank you all for being here and for coming to my talk. Thanks.